it's like a rainy afternoon with some crunch. Mm, five stars. So some people might just kind of, you know, take a potato chip and just eat it, but I want you to do this. So you pick it up, look to the side a little bit, and then, oh, and then you Hey, it. Dana, glad you, uh, you found the set. Oh, uh, hi, Doug. I think you're a little early. Uh, now where did you meet, meet Firebase, right? Uh, well, I'm actually doing my food review right now. Oh, food reviews, my, oh, cool. With my, with my YouTube channel, so I'm just cool. teaching well, people how to eat a potato chip to really get the taste of it. Okay, can yeah. I help? I can do this. Here, I'll, I'll do one. Oh. No. No, I, um, we really should really start. Really taste it. And then you go. Doug! Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson. I'm the developer advocate with the Firebase team, and on the show with me today is Diana Kachiko. Diana! That's full. It's a very dry pear. Are you okay? These are fantastic. Diana. Hi. So good to finally meet you. Thanks for having we me. We work on some of the same stuff, but we've never actually met face to face. So That's true. it's good to finally put a face to all the words that all I the see. Chat messages, type, yeah, lots know? of chat messages. So <laughs> thanks for thanks for making it here to the fire basement. Uh, what Ooh. do you think of the place? I like it. Yes. I like the fire basement. That's, yes, like, that's a good it's, yeah. It's trendy. We 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 do our best. What what is that? That is a picture of a, a very <laughs> Poorly expressed computer. <laughs> I don't know. It has a couple five and a quarter inch floppy it. disks, so I like that. That's 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 my that's my era. Uh, so, what do you do with the Firebase team now? What's going on in Firebase for you? Yeah, so I'm an engineer on uh, cloud functions for Firebase, and uh, I was actually on Firebase hosting previously, and I just moved over to functions. Um, so that's exciting. A whole new uh, array of problems to work on. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot under that umbrella, right? So many There's different products lot. all tied up into one. Yeah, thing. we're kind of like the glue between, you know, cloud and Firebase. So mm -hmm. we're really positioned in a way to kind of integrate the cloud products into Firebase offerings. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been working on that now? Just about a month and a half. A month and a half? Yes. How, how are things ramping up for you? Because I've found um, that there's a lot there to learn. But. There's a lot. There's a lot. Still ramping. Um, a lot of things to do. Went through the cloud docs, went through the Firebase docs, um, you know, making sure that everything is compatible, the experiences are the same. Um, we're working closely with the um, Cloud Functions team in, uh, there in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's exciting. More partnerships. So core Cloud Functions is over in Warsaw. Yep. And then Firebase adds APIs on top of that. That's, that's, what, that's right. what we work on. That's right, yeah. OK, yeah, yeah. And it turns out I think Firebase customers are driving most of the traffic for Cloud Functions that's right, right now. So that's we right. actually kind of call the shots in some sense. That's right. right. <laughs> we are very excited to, you know, we see the graphs and we see that we are driving a lot of the traffic there. The exciting part is uh, now that we kind of revamp the team, um, we have a new kind of agreement to work with cloud functions even closer oh, so cool. that we can go into their code base and we can make changes there, which we didn't uh, we didn't really do before. And so we can work on high priority things that are high priority for Firebase, mm -hmm. um, maybe lower priority for cloud, but we can go in there and we can implement them. Yeah, that's so I'm great. excited to do that. Because a lot of the, the bugs and feature requests that come in are not really Firebase bugs or features. They're more cloud stuff. That's and right. so it's super helpful for all of you out there for us to be able to get into the cloud product and work on it directly. So for sure. I'm excited for, for that new relationship. Yeah. Me too. So what I'm also excited to hear is uh, so we just talked about what you're doing today, but you have like a whole world of experience doing other things up until this point where you're an engineer at Google. So mm -hmm. Tell me your story. It just start at the beginning. Oh, There's just so much the, there. Where to start? Um, OK, uh, so I was uh, born in Russia, in Siberia. Um, I moved to America when I was 10, um, straight into Palo Alto. So uh, my father is an engineer, so he got a job here. Um, never really thought about programming myself. Um, I was doing a lot of ballet. 
Um, okay. I That's did very ballet. different. <laughs> very different, yes. I've done ballet since I was four. So um, started in Russia, continued here. Um, I trained a lot, um, did pre-professional program, then started professional program. Um, so that was about 20 years of ballet, I'd say. Wow. Um, yeah, that's been kind of my focus the whole time. Um, also did some piano on the side there. Yeah, that's. I would say that's been kind of my main focus. And then um, when I went to college, I was not really sure what I want to study. So did you have a major? Were you like undecided? I or? changed my major about five times. Oh, that's that was a lot. Four more times than <laughs> yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I so I entered in as a physics major. Um, my parents are both physicists, so I think that's why physics kind of makes sense to me in a weird way. But yeah, I entered as physics, and then um, I was like, well, I don't know, maybe I should do, you know, economics, maybe I should do, like, business, maybe I should do math. So I just kept jumping around, and uh, then I thought, oh, what about, what about law? Just kind of looked at um, the different, uh, like, essays that I've written in middle school, high school, they all kind of centered around some legal aspect. And I decided to do a legal studies major where I get to kind of try out some law before actually committing to law school. Um, and so Berkeley had a nice program there. So I graduated in 2010, which is when there was the recession and nobody was hiring lawyers. And so I was like, I'm going to have to rethink what I'm going to be doing because I'm not going to go to law school right now. At that time, I was still dancing. Um, I was kind of excited to, now that I'm done with school, I can devote my whole time to dancing. At this time, I was dancing professionally with some small companies in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, I got really burnt out, like, pretty quickly. Uh, I think it was a nice balance to have school, where it's like your mind is working, and then dancing, where your mind's resting, your body's working. And I didn't really realize that until I didn't have it anymore, didn't have that balance. Yeah, and so then I was like, okay, I don't know what to do now. Um, I should get a job somewhere, can't go to law school. So I kind of did this roller coaster ride where I was just working different jobs. I worked in retail, I did um, worked in restaurants, um, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And um, at some point, I started kind of meeting people that were in the tech industry, and uh, they suggested like, hey, um, you can probably try to get a job as like a data analyst um, or a, maybe a product manager or something around uh, tech where you don't really have to be an engineer specifically. Um, mm -hmm. So being like an engineer that. was not on your radar? Originally. No, I was like, oh, I'm not trained to do any of that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, okay. So then I applied to a lot of companies and you know, didn't really get any responses at all. The competition was very stiff. So let me get this straight. You're still dancing during the day, and you're sending out resumes and applications at night. Yes. That's a lot. It's <laughs> a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Sent out about 50 uh, applications with custom cover letters for each one. Um, so yeah, I was absolutely exhausted. Didn't get very many callbacks at all. Um, got maybe like one phone interview after which they were like, nah. And I kind of thought, well, maybe it's not really meant to be. Then in comes my dad. So I did mention my dad is an engineer. Mm -hmm. My dad has been telling me over and over and over and over throughout my life that I might enjoy programming. And so this is a suggestion to you. Suggestion, okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. So he was like, you know, I think you would really like it. I'm like, Dad, this is just, you know, I don't think this is for me. Maybe this is for you, but I don't really feel that connection. So here I am. He catches me. He asks again. Well, I have a lot of Java books. And you know those books. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, the ones that are like that thick mm -hmm. and they have animals on the cover. So he comes in and he's like, hey, I have this book. I think maybe you should read it. It was object-oriented Java. So I start reading the book. And the first chapter, you know, there's lots of lots of words. The book is very thick and I'm just kind of, it, it really tries to get you to think in an object-oriented way, gently. Mm -hmm. So it starts talking about a light bulb, 
and the on and the off and, and I'm just kind of reading it and I'm like, mm, okay, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, an object and it has attributes and it has methods and I'm kind of like, mm, like it kind of makes sense. Wait, did but this book I... have like illustrations and stuff? Because, no. oh, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking of like head first programming where that, that's how they uh, try yeah. to introduce See, you to. See, that would be more fun, I guess. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is like no, more engaging for people text. who have. Oh, wow. It was big though. So that was good. That okay. was okay. The font was big. Oh. So not like tiny font, but okay. still like that thick. So I'm reading this book and I'm kind of like, all right, there's this light bulb thing. I guess you can turn it on, you can turn it off. And uh, I'm not really that engaged. Um, then I think, well, you know, I, maybe this is not for me still. Like, I don't feel that connection there. So I kind of close the book and put it off. And so two weeks go by. I don't open the book. I'm a little frustrated. I don't really understand the point of the what I read and how it's supposed to make sense. Then I'm cleaning my room two weeks later, find the book. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's this thing again that I'm just kind of like, didn't really understand what was in there. So it's I opened still it there. up. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. So I opened it up. I was like, so what was with that light bulb anyway? And then it just all made sense. Everything just like made sense somehow. Maybe it takes it's two weeks time for to me sink to like, in. Yeah. yeah, two weeks. Perfect time to sink in. But I don't in. know how, like, uh, th that wouldn't be the first way I would try to learn programming. It's just by reading a book. Like, I need to type a thing in, you know, and watch true. it work. Because you need know, that instant gratification That's of, like, true. I made a thing work. You That's know? true. You know, I actually did do that with oh, really? Lisp. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and then I didn't use an editor. <laughs> and you know how there's a lot of parentheses? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I was missing a parenthesis <laughs> and I and it was like you know it was like seven layers deep or something yeah. like that and I was just like how is this not working like yeah. I don't understand at all this should totally be working I think it was like square root or something like something yeah and then at some point I asked my dad and he's like oh yeah you're missing a parenthesis here and I was just like this is just stupid like <laughs> what like how do people program in this way like you're missing it and he's like what are you doing you, you need to use like an editor or something like that I was literally just writing it in plain text and something. oh like yeah like Word nothing document or something. yeah basically <laughs> I was like yeah I think programmers <laughs> editors are very helpful there <laughs> yeah and he's like no I think you should use some tooling around this um yeah so you're right the reading the book I think I it was it was I think my dad kind of likes to learn that way where he kind of has this knowledge wash over him while he reads. But I think, yeah, definitely combining with the um, hands-on stuff is more helpful. Yeah. Okay. And so you taught yourself Java this way. I did. I did. Yeah. Um, after, so I actually did not keep reading the same book. I got a different book that was a lot more like exercises. And um, then I started making up stuff. Like I started writing games. I wrote like a little checkers game and then I would play it with my dad once I added like networking to it. And it was really fun. And then I, I made the game, like the computer was now playing against me. Ooh. And you know, it wasn't doing anything like smart. It just knew the rules and it would just pick something but it would do it so fast obviously because it's a computer so i'll just be like oh move like this to this um space and i'd be like thinking i'm like yeah that's that's the right way so i'll move it and then the computer moves up like, oh my god <laughs> i made this and then it would like win sometimes and i'd be like mm. <laughs> artificial intelligence <laughs> <laughs> i was just like this is the proudest moment this is my baby yeah, yeah. Well, that's just, uh, that's the same kind of stuff that I worked on. If you find something you're interested in that you want to build, that really is the best way to learn something. Is if you feel strongly about it, mm -hmm. and you want to make it happen, and it's your thing, and you own it like that, it's better than doing homework, right? Oh, doing yeah, something totally. that someone else told you to do. Yeah. And sometimes sure. the things that other people tell you to do is fun, but having your own thing is by far the best. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. glad you discovered that. That's so awesome. Yeah. 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 I was I was doing it day and night, as uh, coding all the time. I got very obsessed with it. Um, so I was doing that for about nine months, you know, when you like forget to eat, you don't sleep, you're just like, nah, I'm just gonna fix this program, like, yeah. And sometimes I would just be like designing a program and I would just uh, get into a state where I wouldn't be able to stop mm -hmm. thinking about it. And so I'd be going to some party and I'm just like, no, but 
get some piece of paper out and be like, no, this service is going to talk to this. Like, this is the better way to build it. You ever watch that show, Halt and Catch Fire? No. Where they're like, oh, this is what you descri described is totally their experience. Because they're sitting around day oh doing day to day stuff and they have a code in their brain. And so they like furiously oh find pieces God. of paper and write everything down. And it's, it's like so just relate. ridiculously sort of like <laughs> on the brain all the time that you have to get it out somewhere. You know? Yeah, that was me. That was me in the nine months. Um, yeah, so I, I started uh, self teaching, I guess, in uh, April of 2011. And then I had uh, job offers in November of that year. Um, and so I decided to take uh, an offer with a startup. And so that's how, that's how my career started. Wow. So the startup kind of, in a sense, took a risk on you because you didn't mm -hmm. have any formal education. You were self-taught. Yep. But you clearly wowed them enough with your, you know, with your abilities that you taught yourself. Right. So that... That was an interesting thing. Like I had to figure out a way to convey that to the companies that I was applying to because there was nothing on my resume that said I had anything even remotely to yeah. do with computer science. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd look at that and be like, why are they yeah, even applying? Exactly, you know? right? Like why would I even do a phone screen with this person, right? So I decided to um, create a blog oh. where I would teach people about algorithms and data structures and anything else that's interesting that I learned. And uh, then I would just point the companies to that. And then they'd be like, hey, we saw your blog. We we liked it. We want to talk to you. So I think that's a really good way to kind of put your- Put yourself uh, out there. Yeah. Just be known. Well, Diana, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, it was Dad. a pleasure to meet you for the first time and get to know who my coworkers are a little <laughs> bit better. And thank you for tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get more Meet Firebase, Ask Firebase, and video tutorials. And I'll see you here next time. You gotta pick it up with both hands. You gotta set it to the light. With your pinky extended, right? With your pinky extended. Right? Your pinky extended. Okay. Yeah. Smell it all over. You wanna try it? No. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs>